In this video, what I want to do is cover three examples of using the quadratic formula to solve the solutions for a quadratic equation. So we're going to go through three problems that I believe are essential for your understanding of the quadratic formula. If you can master these three examples, you're going to have much more confidence going into a test, going into a quiz, or completing your homework on your own. They're not the most difficult, they're not the easiest, but I believe these are three solid examples to give you a good foundation and understanding of how to use the quadratic formula. So let's go get right into it. The first example is going to be a 2x squared minus a 5x plus 3 is equal to 0. So just remember, whenever you're using the quadratic formula, the main thing that we always want to do is make sure that it's in standard form, right? We want to make sure it's in ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. So if you have letters or numbers on both sides of the equations, get them all over to one side and make sure it is set equal to 0. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the process the way that I like to solve the quadratic formula. You could easily just memorize the quadratic formula and go through the plug and chug method, but I like this step-by-step -step approach. So for each and every one of these problems, this is going to be the process that I'm going to do. The first thing I always like to do, and again, like once you are more comfortable with the quadratic formula, you can kind of skip some of these steps, right? But I always like when I'm doing these, I always tell my students, like whenever you're taking a test or, you know, a quiz, or if you're just learning the concept, like go through these steps. I know it's kind of basic, right? And I know sometimes it might be like rudimentary, but like, I think it's really important to make sure you are avoiding mistakes and going through things step by step. So the first thing I always like to do is I want to identify the coefficients of my quadratic, right? So A, 2 is going to be the um, coefficient of my x squared, my quadratic term. B, which is going to be in this case a negative 5, is going to be the coefficient of my um, x or my linear term. And C is going to be my constant, which in this equation is going to be 3. So you can see when you start talking and doing things fast, you can make mistakes. All right, so that's step number one. The next thing I like to do is be able to identify the discriminant. So rather than doing plug and chug for everything on the quadratic formula, I like to be able to identify the discriminant first. And the discriminant is going to be everything that's under the quadratic. And why that's important is that gives you an idea of what types of solutions you're going to have when solving your quadratic equation. So all I'm simply going to do is going to take my b squared minus a 4 times 8 times c. So in this case, you can see my b is a negative 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a negative 5. And I always like to make sure I'm using parentheses when I'm inserting this in there, um, especially when you have the negative. That can be a mistake. Sometimes people will square the 5 and then multiply a negative and get a negative 25. It's not. It's negative 5 squared is negative 5 times negative 5, which is a positive 25. And then we're going to do minus a 4 times a, which is a 2, and times c, which is a 3. Now here, sometimes depending on the numbers, you can do this all in your head, or you can kind of maybe do a couple different steps. Sometimes what I like to do is just do this, so that's a positive 25. And let's do negative 4 times 2 is going to be a negative 8. Negative 8 times 3 is going to be a negative 24. So therefore, that's going to be a minus a 24. 25 minus 24 is 1. Squared of 1 is just going to be a 1. All right? So now let's go and insert the rest of the quadratic formula. Now, in case you were wondering, like, I forgot what the quadratic formula is, let's just go ahead and write it out here. Okay, so you can see how we took the discriminant, right? It was right there and there. So now all I simply need to do is take the opposite, not the negative, the opposite of B. So in this case, our B was negative 5. So now the opposite of that is going to be a positive 5, and that's going to be plus or minus 1, and then all over a 2 times A. Well, in this case, you can see 2 times 2, I can plug it in, but I can do this work in my head. 2 times 2 is just going to be a 4. So now what I can do is I have to make sure I do both of these calculations to get my final answer. So my answer here is going to be a 5 plus 1, which is a 6, divided by 4. So let's see. Let's go ahead and actually work these out. So 5 plus 1 divided by 4. And we also are going to have a 5 minus 1, which is going to be a 4 divided by 4. 5 minus 1 divided by 4. Okay, so 6 fourths can be reduced to a 3 halves. And 4 over 4 is going to be a 1. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We can do this as a solution set to go ahead and give our two solutions. So in this case, you can see we have two real rational solutions. All right, let's go ahead and work on the next example. All right, now in this example, we're going to do the exact same thing, but I am not going to spend as much time working my way through it. I'm just going to kind of get right into it. So A is 4. B is equal to a negative 12, and C is equal to a 9. Let's go ahead and find the discriminant. So we have a little bit bigger numbers here, but that's okay. Um, just make sure when you're doing this, like, just, I always like to just, like, double check, right? And that's why I think it's, you know, really important also to have the 
have the, like the discriminant and the quadratic form and at least memorize or at least go through as many examples of doing these problems. So you kind of have it ingrained in your body. So I expect my students to know 12 times 12, which is going to be 144. Negative 12 times negative 12 is 144. So four times four is 16. So nine times 10 is 90 and nine times six is 54. 90 plus 54 is a 144. Okay, now you can use your calculator, obviously, if you have that, but notice guys, we're going to get a zero. Now that's very important because when we go back now and plug in um, this uh, for the quadratic formula, we have opposite of B, which again, is going to be a positive 12. And then it's plus or minus a zero divided by two times A, which in this case is going to be an eight. Well, zero plus or minus zero doesn't really matter. So we're just going to get our final answer is just going to be one real rational solution, which is going to be a 12 over an eight, which we can divide by four on the top and bottom. And that is going to be a three halves. All right, so now let's get into the last example. Now this one might look a little bit tricky. We see, now we kind of change some things up, right? And we, we've we already done real rational and we've done uh, two real rational and one real rational. Well, what else could we get for an actual real solution? And in this case, we can see a negative plus plus. All right, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So A is equal to negative one, B is five, C is five. Let's go ahead and find the discriminant. Um, so in this case, we have a 5 squared. I'm not going to use parentheses because it's positive, minus a 4 times a, which is, again, that negative. Make sure it's a negative 1. And then times a c, which is going to be a 5. Um, let's see what that is going to create. So that's a 25. Now, a negative times a negative is a positive 4, right? And so 4 times 5 is 20, right? So that's going to be plus a 20. And therefore, that's going to be a positive 45. Cool. All right. Um, now, in this case, it's kind of important to recognize. Actually, I can actually simplify that, right? I can break down 45 into the square root of 9 times 5, and I can take the square root of 9, which is going to be a 3. So sometimes you're going to have a radical where you can't simplify it, then just leave it as it is. But if you can find a square number that evenly divides into that um, radicand, then you can go ahead and simplify it. In this case, we had 9 divided into 45, so therefore I could simplify this radical. Now let's go ahead and figure out the rest of it. So I have x equals a opposite of b, which again now is going to be a negative 5, plus or minus a 3 square root of 5 divided by 2 times 1, which is going to be a negative two. Okay, so now this is where things get kind of interesting. How do we write this solution, right? Because over here, it was easy. We had one our solution. Here, we could do the math. But over here, it's like, what does the solution look like? Like, how do I do this? Well, again, the same thing like we did in the first example. Just rewrite everything separately. So x equals a negative five plus three square root of five divided by negative two. And here in this case, x equals a negative five minus a three square root of five divided by negative two. Now, if you want to simplify this with fractions, you can go a little bit further, right? You can divide this negative two into both of them. So in this example, we'll have a positive five halves minus a three square root of five divided by two, right? Because a positive divided by negative is now going to turn to a negative. And then over here, you have x equals a negative divided by negative. So that's going to be a positive five halves. And this will also be a positive five, three square root of five divided by two. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That are three examples that I believe you absolutely need to know. However, if you're looking for more examples on the quadratic formula, maybe some more basic examples or some more challenging examples, then check out the next video I have for you here or the examples down in the description below. Cheers.